my lovely imps, we have just received one of the funniest things I've ever seen. So, following a claim by a Huffington Post writer by the name of Yasher Ali, uh, I asked my audience to check their emails and find out if it was indeed true that Joe Biden sent out an email asking for money that calls anybody who is doubting his performance a bedwetter. I, uh, I have mixed feelings about the, uh, the Huffington Post generally, so I wanted to make sure. And I received a copy, an official copy verified of this email. Multiple people got this email. Uh, we are, we're going to look at it. Let's take a look at this because this is so funny. So the email is a fundraising email from the Joe Biden campaign to people who have uh, donated or subscribed. It has seven points in it. And we're going to start with the first one. Point one. Yes, the debate started rough, but voters saw what a threat Donald Trump is to the country. It was more than just lying. He did plenty of that. Trump defended the end of Roe v. Wade, saying it's been a great thing. Said that the pro-Trump Nazi march in Charlottesville was made up. Said on January 6th that we were respected all over the world. Defended his 34 felony convictions, saying the system was rigged and that he did nothing wrong. Now, these things are all true claims that Biden could not respond to during the debate, which is the big concern. No one here is pretending that, that Donald Trump was honest or did well during the debate. It's just that Joe Biden fucking flubbed. And the debate didn't start rough. The debate was rough all the way through. And not just rough, it was abysmal. We watched it with our own eyes. It wasn't... He was fumbling the entire time from beginning to end. Two, actual voters perceive this deb debate very differently than those who pay attention to politics a lot. Called it. I, I, I responded to this exact talking point just earlier in this stream. If you're watching this as a video on YouTube, go check out my video on it, uh, which is the Biden debate discourse. Uh, because I just, I preempted this. I knew this was what they were going to run with. I saw it all over liberal Twitter. So they were already putting out the feelers of this is the message. The message is, oh, actual voters perceive the debate very differently. But we don't know that. And what we do know is that actual voters who may not have actually watched the debate almost certainly are going to be going on social media and seeing the entire dem dem Democrat sphere uh, completely freaking out. They're going to see clips of Joe Biden shutting down completely and going... Uh, uh, uh. We beat Medicaid. All right, let's continue. Breaking news. People think Joe Biden's old. They did coming into the debate. They do coming out of the debate. At the same time, though, a lot of people have rose-colored glasses about the Trump years. The most important thing about the debate was always going to be that people were reminded of what they hate about Donald Trump, that he's unhinged, out for revenge, and in it for himself. Trump, Trump came off as a liar. He didn't come off as unhinged in that debate. This was not Trump's most unhinged moment. Trump played it fairly close to the chest with regard to unhinged statements. There were a few. There were a, a handful of them. But Joe Biden came off as, uh, unhinged isn't the right word, but unstable would be a better word. Let's go to the next point. That's because the long-term impact of the debate is overstated anyway. Let's all remember that Barack Obama lost the first debate in 2012, and the media panicked too. Bush lost in 2004. This is the biggest cope ever. Do you think they would be saying this if they won the debate? Of course not. Insane cope. And those debates were in October, not June. That goes against your case. That's worse. That's because... Th this, these debates being in October means that people were more invested in the candidate before the debate. That's so goofy. Mad cope. Actually mad cope. 90 minutes does not negate three and a half years of results. If you can't win and Donald Trump becomes president because you had a 
a severe mental health moment on stage in front of the entire world, actually, yeah, 90 minutes can negate that, especially if the person you're going up against is the greatest threat to democracy, as the Democrats have been saying. Let's go. I'm not going to read all these stupid points. Literally, this is just them bragging about the, the accomplishments that they think that they have. I don't care. We've already talked about that. We already know what Joe Biden claimed. He stumbled through like two of these during the debate. This is just them b building out their resume puffing. Five, the day after the debate, Joe Biden gave a fiery, defiant speech where he tackled concerns about his age head on. So on a teleprompter, he was able to, to be uh, fiery during the day, but he couldn't at night, specifically after, say, sundown. Uh, he started struggling, and when he was asked to answer things that couldn't be read off of a teleprompter because they require creative thinking and spontaneous thought, he completely struggled. Seems like, um, seems like it doesn't fucking matter if he could do it at his own rally with a, with a teleprompter during the midday. Jesus Christ. Here we go. This is the one. Six. The bedwetting brigade is calling for Joe Biden to drop out. That is the best possible way for Donald Trump to win and us to lose. First of all, Joe Biden is going to be the Democratic nominee, period. Super Democratic. Super Democratic. The, the Democratic nominee, you don't got a fucking choice, Jack. He's the nominee whether you like it or not. You're under our thumb, buddy. Holy God, they are cooked. Actually cooked. I want you to put yourself in the mindset of, of Democrats that got this email and read it today who might have had concerns about his performance at the debate. And now they're saying, if you don't like it, you're a, you're a bedwetter and you don't have a say. We're getting Joe Biden like it or not. Literally just mask off anti-democratic. Joe Biden is going to be the Democratic nominee, period. End of story. Voters voted. He won overwhelmingly. They weren't. If he were to drop out, it would lead to weeks of chaos, internal food fighting, and a bunch of candidates who limped into a brutal floor fight at the convention, all while Donald Trump has time to speak to American voters uncontested. Why is that? Whose fault is that? Isn't it weird that Joe Biden and his administration don't even have, they haven't even begun to set up an heir apparent for when Joe Biden is out of office, even if he does win? Isn't it interesting that there are no, they don't seem to have anybody ready to go. They're not, they don't have the internal loyalty to build up trust, to have other candidates who are like, hey, we're setting this guy up to run for president. They're not doing any of that. It's almost like they're asleep at the wheel. They're too busy covering up for Biden and dealing with his uh, myriad of issues to actually play politics hard. All of that would be in service of a nominee who would go into a general election in the weakest possible position with zero dollars in their bank account. Whose choice is that, Joe Biden? We, this is laying it bare, by the way. The fundamental, that the Democratic Party is following the, is, is following the Trump strategy in the stupidest way. It is not about what's good for the country. It's not about uh, what's good for the Democratic Party. It's not about what's good for democracy. Joe Biden will be the nomination or you'll suck it up because he's the guy in charge now. Deranged. At the end of the day, we'd switch to candidates who would, according to polls, be less likely to win than Joe Biden. The fact that they're even sending out this email and having to be like, no, come on, guys, we're not going to depose our candidate. I want you to recognize just how bad the stakes are right now. Just how bad it is that they have to send out an email going, guys, 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 come on. Sure, he shut down publicly, unarguably, live on stage, and the entire Democratic Party is in a panic, and every politically active person is in a panic. But guys, we don't got to depose the incumbent, a thing that we would never even talk about any other year. This is so bad. Here we go. Number seven. 
Joe Biden is the Democratic nominee, period. Rather than worrying about polls, our supporters are getting on board. Did you see the awesome clip of our supporters on the tarmac doing the Cupid shuffle at 2 a.m. on the night of the debate? Are you... What on... They're done! They're so... It's so... They're so done! <laughs> b -b 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 Bazinga. Sure. Our candidate literally couldn't speak, was genuinely incoherent, and sent the entire Democratic establishment into an absolute panic. But did you see people doing high, high hopes for the living on the fucking tarmac? Sorry, I really shouldn't insult uh, P P Pete Buttigieg because at this point, I'd vote for Poot Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Poot Buttigieg. I'd v vote for Pete Buttigieg over Biden any day. I'm catching it. The Cupid Shuffle. Did you see the awesome clips of our supporters doing the Cupid Shuffle? Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> the biggest rally of our campaign on Friday? Well, no, probably not because the media is busy hyperventilating and trying to manifest drama to boost ratings. Do you guys remember how for the entire time of Joe Biden's campaign, they've made, tried to make fun of Trump going after the media, and now they're trying to insult the media? This is, they are cooked. But this isn't Aaron Sorkin's fever dream. It's Joe Biden's reelection campaign. This is, this is the most I'm not owned I think I've ever seen a political candidate. I didn't think it could get more embarrassing than like Ron DeSantis, like having to thank Donald Trump after Donald Trump uh, like said, uh, tell your wife I said hi, Ron, and screw you, I won. And then Ron DeSantis is like, thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you so much for, uh, for uh, being graceful as I, uh, as I back out of this race. I didn't think it could be much sadder, but this just did it. Did you, <laughs> you didn't see? Our, sta our paid staffers doing the Cupid Shuffle on the tarmac? <laughs> are you even, are you even in America? The stupid bedwetting loser media, they, they just want you to think that Donald, that, that, that Donald Trump won the debate and that Joe Biden shat his pants publicly. But he actually shat his pants twice publicly because he's upped his fiber recently. Can we see? I want to see if we can see the Cupid Shuffle now. Now I need to see the, this awe-inspiring Cupid Shuffle. Where is it? I don't see any videos of the Cupid Shuffle. Where's the Cupid Shuffle? I can't even... Where is it? Where is it? Somebody give it to me. I can't find it on YouTube. I literally just searched Biden Cupid Shuffle and couldn't find it. Anybody got it? Anybody got the video? I don't. Oh, I see a video from two weeks ago of Joe Biden freezing while he was dancing. Hmm. Where is it? Is it on his campaign website? No, Joe Biden's campaign website literally just has him begging for money all over it. They don't even have a platform. Maybe, let's double check. Maybe they got it up on here. Let's check. Let's see if they got it up on their website. Literally just a giant donation request. Let's continue, let's see. Oh, more donation, more donation, another donation. Sign up uh, for donations. A, a Joe Biden chatbot that will ask you for donations. A message asking for money. Here's a bunch more donations down below. Yeah, sorry. Um, I want to know. I want to see the Cupid Shuffle. I want to. I want to be convinced that Joe Biden is going to kick ass, but I can't find the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, here's a, when I search Biden staffers dance on YouTube. I get a bunch of videos of Joe Biden falling over, having uh, senior moments. Amazing, truly incredible.
Anybody else found it? If anybody finds it, I'd love to see the Cupid Shuffle. This is where we're at, okay? Dems in fucking free fall, okay? This is where they're at. That was what the best they could come up with. They didn't even wait to check the chap to, to like check the temperature. They're just like, you guys are a bunch of bedwetters. Insane move to call your supporters bedwetters when your candidate is fucking Biden. It, a actually insane thing to do. Well, at least it's gonna be funny, everybody. At least it's gonna be funny. Okay. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed uh, the funniest Biden email that you've ever seen in your entire life and also a nice helping of the theater of the absurd, make sure that you press subscribe down below and leave me a comment. Do you think the Cupid Shuffle could change your mind to vote even harder? To maybe even vote twice for Joe Biden? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.